Hey guys, we are continuing to look at equation. We have done one step, we have done two step. Now we are going to add another step. We are going to be solving equations with like terms. So before we do that, I want you to remember that an, an equation is two expressions that are separated by that equal sign. Before an equation can be solved with inverse operations, each expression on both sides of the equal sign must be simplified. So we're basically going to split our equation and look at one side at a time and ask ourselves, is it simplified? Today we will simplify by combining like terms on the same side of the equal sign. And then we will add or subtract to remove the constant and multiply or divide to remove the coefficient. These two steps might be familiar, these last two, because once you get to this point, it is a two step equation just like we did yesterday. So as you can see, we just have one new step at the beginning today of combining like terms. All right, so let's look at this first one. So I want to look at both sides of the equation and ask myself, is it simplified? So this first side here is 6x plus 2 minus 2x. I want to ask myself, is it simplified? No, it is not. I can combine this 6x and this negative 2x. Since I am not moving to the other side of the equal sign, I'm just going to combine those. I'm not doing opposite operations yet. I'm just combining. So 6x minus 2x becomes 4x. And then I bring down the plus 2. And then this side is obviously simplified since it's just one number. I'm going to bring it down and it's 8. And now this is just a two-step equation like I did yesterday. So I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides, and I get 4x equals 6. And then I'm going to divide by 4, and 6 divided by 4 is 1.5. Okay, let's look at the second one. I want to do the same thing. I want to look at both sides of the equation as an expression and ask myself, is that expression simplified? So let's start with the left side, 2x minus 9x. That is not simplified. Those are like terms, so I can combine those. So I just need to do 2x minus 9x. 2 minus 9 is negative 7, so that'll become negative 7x equals, and then the right side was simplified, so I just bring it down. And now this is just a one-step equation. The last thing I have to do is just get rid of the negative 7 by dividing. And x will be whatever 59.5 divided by negative 7 is, which is negative 8.5. All right, let's look at number 3. Same thing, I want to split my equation in half. This right side is obviously simplified, but this left side, we have a lot going on, so let's try and simplify it. The 1 fourth x doesn't have anything to combine with. There is not another x on this side of the equation. So I'm just going to bring down the 1 fourth x. And then I can combine 10 and negative 1, and 10 minus 1 is 9. And then I'm going to bring down the 32. Now this is a two-step equation. I'm going to get rid of the constant attached to the x first. So I'm going to subtract 9 from both sides. And I get 1 fourth x equals 32 minus 9 is 23. Okay, now I have a fraction coefficient. And I'm going to undo that fraction coefficient by multiplying by the reciprocal of 4 over 1. And x will be whatever 23 times 4 over 1 is, which is 92. All right, number 4. Okay, this time my right side of the equal sign, or sorry, my left side is pretty simplified. There's just one number, so I will just bring that down. The left side will say 60.5. But this right side, I can definitely combine some terms. 8.75x will combine with the negative 0.75x. So I just need to do 8.75 minus 0.75, and I get 8x. 
And now I just have the constants left that I can combine to be one number. 1.25 plus 3.25 is 4.5. Okay, now this equation looks a lot easier to solve. It's just a two-step equation. I'm going to remove the constant first by doing the opposite. So I'm gonna subtract 4.5 from both sides. And 60.5 minus 4.5 is 56. And the right side I'm left with 8x. And now my last step is to just divide by eight and 56 divided by 8 is 7. Okay, let's look at number 5. I need to simplify my left side of the equation. My right side is already simplified. So I'm just going to bring down the 20, and now on the left side I can combine the x's. And 1 fifth minus arrow out, minus 3 fifths is negative 0 0.4. Since that's a terminating decimal, it's okay to leave it as a decimal since I don't have to round. And I'm going to bring down the plus 2. And now this is just a two-step equation. I'm going to remove this constant by subtracting 2. And I get negative 0 0.4x equals 18 and I'll divide by negative 0 0.4, and 18 divided by negative 0.4 is negative 45. All right, number six. It says the perimeter of the rectangle below is 22. Find the value of x. So the perimeter is all the way around the rectangle. So I'm going to add the four sides together and set it equal to 22. So the first side is 1.5x minus 1. I have another one of those sides. Plus 3.5x plus 2. Plus 3.5x plus 2, and it all equals 22. That's a really long equation. Let's start simplifying. I'm going to have 1.5x plus 1.5x plus 3.5x plus 3.5x. So 1.5 plus 1.5 plus 3.5 plus 3.5 is 10x. That's a lot better than four different terms. All right, now I'm gonna have the constants, negative one, negative one, two, and two. So I'm just gonna do that in the calculator too. Negative one minus one plus two plus two is two. And remember, it equaled 22. Okay, now I just have to finish solving. I'm going to remove the constant by subtracting two and I get 10x equals 20 and then I divide by 10, so x is two. All right, number seven, it says Maria is making a quilt and bought supplies from a sewing store for $62. She bought some ribbon for $12, thread and a fabric that costs four times as much as the thread. Write an equation and solve to find the price of the thread and the fabric. So there's two things in our question here that we need to find, thread and fabric. I'm going to let the variable represent the price of the thread though because that's what the problem is referring to. So x will be the cost of the thread. Okay, now let's write an equation for this. Um, her total cost was $62. She bought some ribbon for $12. She bought thread, that's gonna be X, that's what I'm looking for. And she bought fabric that costs four times as much as the thread. So the fabric can be represented by four X because it was four times what the thread cost. Okay, now I'm going to combine like terms here and this equation can be written as 62 equals 
12 plus 5x. And I'm going to subtract 12. I get 50 equals 5x. Divide by 5. So that means x is 10. So that means that the thread costs $10. And then remember it wanted us to find the cost of the fabric too, and the fabric was four times as much as the thread. So that means the fabric was $40. Okay, last one, it says, Ryan took two of his friends out for ice cream and they paid $8.50 for their order. Ryan got a sundae, his friend got an ice cream cone, and his other friend got a fudge bar for two fifty. dollars Ryan's sundae costs twice as much as the ice cream cone. Write an equation and solve to find the price of the sundae and the ice cream cone. So we're referring to the ice cream cone. That's what we're referring to as it says his sundae costs twice as much as the ice cream cone. So I'm going to let the variable x be the cost of the ice cream cone. Okay, so I can write my equation now. It was 850 equals... He got a sundae, and remember the sundae was twice as much as the ice cream cone. So that'll be 2x. It was like paying for two ice cream cones. And then his friend got an ice cream cone, so we're going to add another x in there for that one. And then the fudge bar was 250. So there's our equation, and now we can solve it. I'm going to combine like terms. And I get 850 equals 3x plus 250. I now need to remove the constant. So I'm going to subtract 250 from both sides. And I get 6 equals 3x divided by 3. So x is 2. So that means that an ice cream cone was two dollars and remember his sunday was twice as much as the ice cream cone so the sunday was four dollars